the title came about because when I was doing research into, uh, into the mystery genre, I was reading a lot of Agatha Christie and there is an Agatha Christie novel called A Pocket Full of Rye, which is of course again a reference to the, um, the nursery rhyme. And, um, and I was sort of just thinking about, because I knew I wanted to have it set in a, in a taxidermy department and eyes just seem like an excellent play of, you know, play on words. Uh, I have uh, never had an interest in the crime genre. Um, I've never really read crime. I actually know that's not true. I read a lot of, uh, of Trixie Belden and Nancy Drew as a kid, uh, but I have never gotten into adult crime uh, and don't watch any of those many, many crime TV shows on television, but um, was sort of intrigued by the idea of writing a crime novel and so I had to do a lot of research to figure out how it all works. Yeah, I did do a lot of research for the book, um, particularly in terms of all the trivia. Um, the taxidermy stuff, I just borrowed a whole bunch of old books from the library about how to do taxidermy and read them all and, you know, it was actually quite interesting. Um, I also I have a friend who works at Melbourne Museum and I went on a behind the scenes tour there and quite a lot of the little stories that I put uh, in there were about were things that really happen at Melbourne Museum um, and, and the way that they prepare, you know, the hides and the salts and the koala. The koala was actually, I did meet a, an inside out koala when I went to Melbourne Museum. And, um, and lots of those sort of little bits and stories and, and the description of behind the scenes in a museum came from that. And then um, the internet is an amazing source of really random trivia about animals. And, and once you get started and you start telling people about, oh, did you know this thing about toads? A lot of people will go, oh, oh, have you heard this thing about this? Uh, and I also went to a, a very small natural history museum in, uh, in England, and I can't even remember the name of it. Um, but it was tiny and it was the personal collection of, of an old anatomist uh, and it was a very strange and eccentric collection and that's what I based Cranston's collection on and a lot of things like the jar full of mole pores that really came from that place and lots of other strange things. Uh, the biggest challenge was, was definitely grappling with uh, the whole idea of a murder mystery genre and the detective genre in terms of having to uh, figure out that whole plot, have a, you know, hopefully a, a good twist at the end and have lots of good clues that I'd seeded at the beginning of the book. I sort of put in a lot of things thinking, oh, that'll be a really good clue. And then when I got to the end, I'm like, well, now those clues actually have to pay off and, and mean something. So that was a very big challenge, uh, was making it all fit together. Um, I do like the makeout scene on the tiger. Um, it, it was a lot of fun to write. In fact, I quite enjoyed writing all of the makeout scenes. Um, yeah, that's probably my favourite bit. Um, and anything that involves, you know, good quality flirting between B and Toby, I love a good flirt. Um, I started writing uh, pretty much as soon as I could hold a pencil um, because I always loved reading so much. Um, I was first published in a magazine called VoiceWorks, which is a magazine uh, that's a national magazine for young people uh, about writing and poetry and comics and all sorts of other things. It was published in that when I was 11. Uh, and then in terms of publishing real books, uh, I was working at the State Library of Victoria and, and working with a lot of publishers and I, I guess I just met a lot of people and started writing a lot of reviews and articles and things through there and then it just sort of turned into writing one day when someone rang me up and asked if I'd like to try writing a book. Um, in terms of advice for young writers, I think that reading is probably the best piece of advice. Uh, read as much and as often as possible and if you're afraid that what you're reading is going to, is going to affect what you write, then you're not reading enough. Um, other advice, try and get published but not books published, like little things uh, like entering competitions. VoiceWorks magazine again is a really great way for young people to get publishing experience. Um, pay attention when people criticise your work and don't be too precious about it because uh, people do generally want to make your writing better and if you can take on board their feedback then it will make you a better writer. Um, what's my other advice? Stay away from adverbs unless totally necessary. Um, I'm currently working on a novel called Love Shy, uh, which will be out next year, I think. Um, and it is about 
a girl who uh, called Penny who wants to be a journalist, she wants to be an investigative journalist and she feels like her school newspaper isn't really offering her enough hardcore journalism opportunities. Uh, but she discovers that there's a boy at her school and she doesn't quite know which boy but she reads an email and, and figures out that there's a boy at her school who is love shy which is sort of a, a weird psychological condition where boys are really afraid of girls where they're, they're very so shy that, that girls actually frighten them and, uh, and so Penny becomes determined to not only find this boy uh, but to fix him and turn it into this you know journalistic extravaganza of, of excellence uh, and of course everything goes horribly horribly wrong.